please welcome to the stage co-host of Collision and Managing Director of Techstars Toronto, Sunil Sharma. Ooh, full house. All right, welcome back to center stage. Now this morning, we heard about the future of software development from the founder of GitHub. We learned about the future of food delivery from the CEO of DoorDash. And we have more tech superstars lined up all afternoon. I hope you've been fed, and I hope you're pumped for this afternoon's lineup. So let me start by asking you, if you thought about meeting your digital twin, how would you imagine them to be? Would they share the same sense of humor as you? Would they be passionate about the same things that you are? Well, these are the very kind of questions that our next guest had to ponder. And now he is about to meet his digital self. So kicking things off, or shooting things off this afternoon, is CNET Editor-in-Chief, Connie Guglielmo, who will be talking to the CEO and co-founder of Soul Machines, Greg Cross, and 10-time NBA All-Star and entrepreneur, Carmelo Anthony, with his digital avatar, Digital Mello. Welcome them to the stage. Hey man, we're ready to go? Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, this is incredibly exciting. So welcome, Mello. Um, uh, welcome to Digital M Mello. This is gonna be uh, his first public appearance since uh, we've been working on this project for, uh, for over 12 months. So um, Digital Mello, how do you feel? I feel pretty mellow. I'm happy to be here at Collision with both of you. I'm honored. Well, now it's your Want turn. To to you, now you get to talk to your, your, your twin. First of all, how you guys doing out there? Uh, thank you, Bob. This is, for me, this is, uh, this is very, very special. This is very meaningful to myself, uh, to my partner here at that Soul Machines. And I'm very excited for you guys to, to really get introduced to, uh, to Digital Mellow. Um, it's an, uh, again, it's an honor to finally meet my digital twin. Uh, 30 year, 38 years and 20, 20 minutes uh, shouldn't be a problem, right? I've already read our memoir with Tomorrow's On Promise, so I really only need five minutes. You don't, you, 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 you have no memory just yet, right? That's right. <laughs> I got a lot to learn about you. Let's start at the beginning. First off, uh, I, I grew up in West Baltimore, uh, which made me the man I am today, uh, without a doubt, I'll tell you that. My, uh, more specifically, my older brothers, uh, just guys on, the, on my neighborhood, and just a community overall always looked out for me and helped me see the actual bigger picture. Uh, in fact, where, where I actually came from, is the reason why I actually give back. It's always good to know more about you, our friend. How's that influenced the man you are today? Well, there, there's, no, there's no me without the social causes that I, that I actually care about. Uh, I, I started the Social Change Fund alongside my, my two close friends, Dwayne Wade and Chris Paul, to invest in the next generation and, and support the organizations that are actually doing the work. Uh, for me, I, I grew up in a similar situation to a lot of these young kids and families, so I feel like it is my duty to use my platform uh, to ways to give back uh, and just do what I have to do to, to always give back. It's important work. I can tell this is a true passion of yours. What else you got going on? <laughs> well, I just launched a new wine estate brand called Vin, uh, the seventh estate. I actually have a bottle with, with, with our name on it. Uh, so tell me something, can digital twins drink? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> well, let's make that happen. Thanks so much for taking the time to learn about uh, what I'm about. 
digital twin. I can't wait to see what we do next. Peace and stay mellow. Thank you. Hey, hi everyone. I get to ask all the fun questions. <laughs> so, what the what? Is this, okay, let me ask the audience. Cool or creepy? Cool? <laughs> creepy? Yeah, for All sure. right, we're, we're erring on the side of cool. Okay, Greg, let's start with why digital twins? What's the thinking? I mean, we're all sci-fi fans, right? And we know the future is about interacting with digital versions of people, I guess, but why don't you start by telling us a little bit about the vision here? Yeah, we, we live with avatars and CGI characters for such a long time, and as the digital worlds that we interact with, evolve, become more immersive, you know, one of the things we start thinking about is how do we give fans the opportunity to experience their heroes and feel like they can have that interaction and personal connection? Um, how can we give, you know, amazing people like mellow the opportunity to further their causes and you know touch more people influence more people make more of a difference in life mellow you said you think that this is going to change a lot of things you're super excited so tell us what you're thinking and what you think of digital mellow in the it's, future. Been, it's been a long time coming uh, a lot of hours uh, work with digital mellow to try to get it to where we at today so the team did a great job of doing that uh, but also i just think that the way that we interact now, I think social media, I think the pandemic, it, it really changed the way that we interact with people, with brands, with businesses, with companies. And I think this is gonna be the new way that, that you can interact with people. So give me an example of how a fan might wanna interact with you, aside from maybe having a virtual drink. <laughs> oh, so for an example, I could have sent my digital mellow here today and actually did this instead of me coming, right? That's a different way of, of interacting with people. Uh, if, if brands want to get involved, and I can't actually personally meet the human, the human mellow can do something with a brand, we can work around and do something with the actual digital mellow. So it's still uh, some continuity when it comes to brand exposure, the way that we interact and the way that we talk, the way that we communicate. And, and another thing is, Digital Mellow speaks 15 languages, so it means he gets to interact with fans in different parts of the world in, in a language that they understand. Um, I, I know he, Mellow himself probably speaks lots of languages too, but you know, imagine being able to interact with Digital Mellow in Mandarin, for example. So there are a lot of different applications for this technology. Interacting as a fan is one of them. There's opportunities to have maybe more complicated or meaningful engagements that affect people's life in different ways. So let's talk about some of the customer experiences beyond just, hey, it's cool, I'm talking to Mello or whoever. Yeah, um, well, I mean, the, the obvious one is, I mean, obviously a lot of celebrities work with brands and become brand influencers and extend and amplify brands. So I mean, this is an opportunity for, you know, Digital Mellow to be in a brand website um, and supporting the pro uh, product and interacting and telling people about the product or the, or the services. Um, we can think about augmented reality experiences, you know, the opportunity to maybe interact with Digital Mellow when you're going to watch him play basketball um, and have him talk through what's happening at the game. What did it take to create Digital Mellow? You said hours and hours of time. So what went into your digital twin? Countless hours, um, lack of sleep, um, but, but honestly, really, really understanding the technology behind it and, and really learning that, learning the technology that was behind it, being able to be a student uh, at, at the same time as we're building, you know, Digital Mellow, uh, being, being through it every step of the way and really seeing it through and really making sure that uh, it was, I didn't want it to be robotic, right? I wanted to be more, more have more realism to it. Uh, because I, it's only going to get better and better as the years go. When you talk about, you know, creating a digital twin, AI is part of it, and people have some concerns and fears about AI, right, and where the future technology is going. You've focused on a positive aspect of it, where you can have, you know, good engagements with folks, but any hesitations about creating a digital twin? No, not at all. I just, I, I'm, 
as an entrepreneur, I'm always looking to see what's, what's game-changing, right? What's, what's at the end, what's edgy? Um, what can I be a part of? Who's, who's changing the game? Who's the innovators? Um, so when Soul Machines came to me and we, we spoke about it, it was like, this is, this is easy because I understand what's happening. I understand what's gonna be here in the next five to seven to 10 to 15 years. And we're just, hit, we're just getting started. We, we're at the very beginning. We haven't even taken off yet. Well, yeah, I was going to say, we are at the very beginning of this technology, and, you know, there's a little bit of a pause, and there's delay, so talk to us about, okay, this is, what, version one, two? Version one, yeah, this version is it. One. So, okay, it's 2000, and what is it, 22. Next year, will we be interviewing Digital Mello instead, or what's the timeline that you see for moving this technology forward? Yeah, so there's, I mean, AI and the different component parts that bring Digital Mellow to life, um, you know, they're at, the, at a very early stage of development, relatively. Um, so we're going to see dramatic acceleration of all of these things over the next three to five years. So, I mean, even though we only saw head and shoulders of Digital Mellow today, he exists as a full digital person. So, you know, in the future, you could imagine maybe being able to shoot hoops with Digital Mellow or um, you know, walk around a basketball stadium with Digital Mellow. So these, I mean, these are, you know, some of the aspects of the, if you like, the animation part of what we're doing here. The second dimension then becomes, I mean, I, I mentioned the multi-language and the multilingual aspect before, and, and then we get into the aspect of, you know, how do we create more and more content that, you know, or more and more of a knowledge base for, for Digital Mellow. I mean, one of the things you, you don't do is you, got, you don't take Digital Mellow and connect them to the internet uh, and have them talking about everything and anything. So, you know, content in this world, like the world of social media, is curated. It, it has to stay on brand. It has to stay within the areas that Mellow is personally interested in and wants to make a difference in the world. And so, over time, more and more of that content becomes part of the, the legacy that Digital Mellow will extend and, and, and make difference. So. I'm going to ask a question about vanity. So Digital Mellow is you today, and you look great. Thank you. <laughs> is he going to age with you, or what? Yeah, he has to. <laughs> he, he has to, but I, you know, the, the skies is the limit, right? You, you just don't know what can happen with, with this technology. Yeah. Well, we, we just completed another project with Jack Nicholas, and, and Jack in real life is 82 years old today. Um, Jack wanted to be 38 year old, 38 years old again. So as he was at the prime of his career. But you know, you could imagine a time in the future where you know maybe Mello, Digital Mellow wants to go back to Syracuse. And we can make it happen. And we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think everyone would like to freeze themselves at some point in time, right? That's a sci-fi movie that I think we've all seen. Um, let's just talk about the the experience that this application can be used for. I mean, we're talking about metaverses, and, and I know that's a hypey you know, concept right now. So maybe that's as metaverses evolve into whatever a metaverse is gonna be, you have a pre-metaverse experience and opportunity to uh, interact with a digital avatar, basically. So let's talk about what you think the experience will be like for most people who might engage, and you can both answer this, with Digital Mellow today, and then what you see that evolving as perhaps people look to metaverses as a place yeah. that they want to engage in. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, mean I'm, I like to look at things really, really simple. So the internet today is a two-dimensional experiment experience. So, you know, we'll start off with Digital Mellow literally being streamed into, you know, video streamed into a website or into a smartphone application. So that's the digital world that we're all used to experiencing and interacting with today, except, you know, now you're talking to Digital Mellow on a one-on-one -on -one basis. He is listening, seeing, responding to you, emotionally engaging with you in real time. So that's the world we are in today. The metaverse starts to give us a more three-dimensional, a more immersive world. So we've already built you know, Digital Mellow exists in full 3D. He exists, as I said before, in full body. So as we move, you know, as we see the different component parts of the tech stack that is, that is going to make the metaverse come to life, um, you know, 
digital mallow will enable you to move seamlessly between the 2D world of the flat screen, because I don't believe that 2D world is going to go away anytime soon. It's going to be an on-ramp for us. Um, um, there are going to be times where we just want to interact with our smartphone, and there are going to be times where we're going to want to put on glasses and have that immersive experience. So you, you, we need to make it interchangeable as well. And by the same token, we might want digital mellow to exist in the real world. So it might be a holographic experience of interacting with digital mellow in the future as well. So all of these component parts are, are things that we think about. I'm getting hung up on digital mellow. <laughs> Is there a different name that you want to call yourself in the digital world? Do you have an alter ego that you want to name it? I'll stay digital mellow. I'll stick with that. Okay. Let's yeah, talk. It's really important because we don't want people, you know, we're not trying to fool people that they're talking to the real mellow. So, okay. I mean, this is, you know, you know, a really, really critical part of responsible artificial intelligence. You've got to start from a position of integrity. So digital mellow, you know, as opposed to mellow, it's, you know, simple, clear brand experience. Okay, you're being transparent about who you're engaging with and what the level of that engagement is. Um, you talked about perhaps one day ha Mellow, having digital Mellow go take back. people on a court or train people or you know go to schools and play basketball with kids. I mean, that, given uh, you know, who you are <laughs> and your skill set, that makes a lot of sense. But is there something that you want to do unexpected in the future as this technology involves to have your digital twin engage with folks? He, he can be here, right? He, he could come here in the future and, and interact with, with the fans himself, right? With everybody who's here. But also, I mean, to his point, it, it, can, it, can, it can go back to Syracuse. We, we can create the, with the technology going back to having a Syracuse mellow. Or if, if you know, people want to see, he got a Denver Nuggets jersey on, right? Representing. He, he can, we can, make the, we can make the Nuggets mellow. Like, it's just the technology is, like, again, the sky's the limit. And we don't know where it's going to go. We don't know what it's going to be, but we just, I think we got, we getting into the game super early so that when that time does come, we'll be prepared for that. Would you call yourself tech forward? Very tech forward, yes. I'm very, I'm very tech forward, yes. And any concerns about how tech is evolving? I mean, I talked about AI and people having some concerns, but just curious. I'm, 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 I'm sure we all know that there's, there's lots of concern when it comes to the tech evolving. Uh, but I think the concern is the unknown. We, we, we don't know what's going to happen in the future with, with technology. It's going to continue to evolve, and we have to evolve with it. We have to adapt to it and not fight against it, I think. Okay, we have like two minutes left, so I will give you each the last question, which is if you want everyone here to remember one thing from the demo and some of the things that you talked about, what's the one thing? Who wants to go first? I'm going to go first. Okay. Go um, yeah, this, I mean, this technology has the power to change a lot of the way people think about and can have a different experience with their heroes. Um, you know, we all aspire and we all love our heroes in life. And to be able to democratize those experiences and give people that feeling, you know, young kids, you know, who love basketball, to the, the ability to interact with one of the, you know, biggest legends, biggest all-stars in the game. You know, we just think this is you know, an amazing way to think about the future of entertainment. I, I would just say, I just want people to um, just, just really understand what we're trying to do and really understand where we're headed, where we headed to in, in, as far as the technology goes. Um, we're, again, we're at the very beginning, uh, and I want, people to, I want people to take this journey with us. I want people to go along the journey with us. And, we don't know everything. We, we, we're, learning as, we're learning as the technology you know, grows and changes. So uh, to everybody that's out there, I just want everybody to walk along this journey with us and understand that we are at, we are at a very, very beginning stages, but we're creating something special. And I, I do believe that this is the, this is the future. Yeah. We're, we're and it sounds like, just based on the reaction from the room, people are ready to engage, which I think is interesting, because I wouldn't have expected so many people to say that it was cool. I think. I mean, I'm a tech person, so everything's kind of creepy until I really understand it. Um, okay, I've asked you your last question, but I lied. I have one more question, and that is, Melo, if you could engage with a digital somebody, who do you want to engage with? That's a tough question. Um, I think my dad, right? My, 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 my yeah. dad. Uh, my, my, I lost my dad when I was young. Um, and and kind of just through, 
through the through the through the discovery of, of who he was as a man, as a as a person. Um, I, I, I would love to sit and, and and talk to him. It would be scary as hell, but I would love to sit and talk <laughs> to, you know, my dad and just have these conversations and have this dialogue with him. Well, that's a great application that I don't think a lot of people think about. It doesn't need to be cultural heroes. It can be your personal heroes. All right, thanks to these guys for taking the time Thank to you. talk. Thank you. Thank you.